Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James. I'm from the Education Department here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Welcome to our Sharkies Adventure class. Oh my gosh, that's a stingray. We'll talk about them too. We have a great opportunity to meet my best friend Sharky here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Now, while we're doing our class, you get to interact too. We have a text number that you can text in questions to and my friend over in the other room will be able to help answer those questions and also we can answer them on the screen. So if you want to, text the number below 562-286-1838. Remember that messaging rates apply and if you're a young friend of ours, have an adult help you out, make sure you have permission to text us questions. If you are watching from the recorded version, there's also a way for you to help and interact with us. If you can give us an email at live at lbaop.org, you can ask questions through the email and we'll have our friends here at the aquarium help answer them for you. All right, so we're gonna talk about sharks today. I love sharks. They are wonderful animals. We have a lot of beautiful sharks that live here. You got to see our shark webcam real briefly before when we first started. And we'll get back to that too. Let's think about all the things we might know about sharks. What do you know about sharks? We saw them swimming, so they live in the water. We saw how they were swimming. We'll talk a little bit more about that too. They eat a lot of different food and there's a bunch of different kinds of sharks too. Okay, so let's see what we can figure out why sharks are so much fun. They're fish, just like other kinds of fish but they're a little different. They have special characteristics that make them different. Now I have a camera over here that we also can look at some shark artifacts with too. So my friend Emily is helping control the computer and if we need to go over to the camera, we'll let them know that we can go check out what's under the camera. But let's go back to our shark webcam and see if we can make some other observations. We're gonna use our eyes and our brains and we're gonna think about anything else we might know about sharks and their cousins, the stingrays. There's one of our beautiful zebra sharks swimming right in front. I believe that is Fern. Fern is a famous shark here at the aquarium. Fern has participated in some shark research, helping us learn more about how sharks have babies and how we can help other sharks in the ocean have more babies so their population numbers increase. We also have our little sea turtle trying to hide on us. All right, maybe he'll come back later. Not a shark, but sea turtles are fun. Well, what did we see? What did we observe happening to our sharks in Shark Lagoon? Did you notice how they swim? I'm going to get my shark model out real quick. It's a very fancy scientific shark model. He's a very happy shark. When the sharks were moving, how did we watch them move? Were they swimming like a Garibaldi? Were they going... <gasps> no, nah, they weren't doing that. They were using their tail. They swoosh their tail back and forth to help push them through the water. That's a really good observation. If you're watching really closely, look at the color of our shark puppet friend here and the sharks that were on screen. Did you notice that their backs are darker in color than their stomachs are? That's a pretty common shark adaptation or ability that helps them survive. Sharks and a lot of animals in the ocean have a darker back and a light colored belly, just like this one right here, the black tip reef shark. And that color helps them hide both from predators and from prey. So if you were a shark and you wanted to find food and you're swimming along, how do you hide from an animal that you're swimming around? Well, if you're underneath them, their light belly looks like the sunlight. So if you were that animal that shark wants to eat, you may not recognize that's a shark. If you're swimming above them, the dark of their back will kind of look like the dark ocean beneath you. So that helps them hide underneath them. Well, it's not just sharks that have that. Lots of animals have what we call counter shading, a dark back and a light belly. So they often will have this ability to help hide from other animals in the ocean. Well, we already have questions coming in. Don't forget, you can text in questions to us about sharks and animals that live here at the aquarium. So one said, why can't we keep mako sharks at a zoo or aquarium? That's a good question. The mako shark is a really, really beautiful shark, but they're the fastest shark in the ocean. They can swim about as fast as uh, we can drive on the highway, 50 to 60 miles an hour. 
That means they need a lot of space. You imagine, if you've ever been to the Aquarium of the Pacific, inside where we have all of the big galleries, that's not even enough space for that animal by itself to live. So because they can swim so much, they eat certain special kinds of food, they need a lot more space than we would be able to provide. They also live right here in California. So we'll just let them be in their home habitat right there in the ocean. And we've even seen them when we're out on boats here in California. So good question about mako sharks. Isabella has a very important question. And this is one I'm sure a lot of you have thought about. Do fish get cold? Hmm. You and I might get cold if there's a cold breeze outside. I was trying to eat lunch outside today. There was a cold breeze. But if I was a fish, I have a little bit different control of how my body temperature works. For mammals like us and birds, we're warm blooded, meaning our bodies want to stay the same temperature all the time. Let's pretend it was way too hot outside. If I was out in a long sleeve jacket, poofy jacket and pants and boots, it might get a little too warm. My body wants to stay one temperature and that's not going to let any heat off. Let's look at the opposite. If I'm in shorts and my shoes out in the snow, my body's going to get too cold. My body wants to stay the same temperature, but a fish, their body is the temperature that they live in. So that's a very big difference between certain animals. That's why fish, they don't really get cold, but they only survive in certain temperatures that they're okay with. So some fish are tropical, like the fish in Tropical Lagoon and our Shark Lagoon, they need warmer water than the fish that live here in California. So in Shark Lagoon, this is a tropical habitat. It's about 70 to 74 degrees. That's a pretty good temperature for them. That's probably not even that bad for us. California waters though, we really range between 58 to 65 and 65 is like the warmest part of the summer. So our water is a lot colder. So some fish will live in cold water or warm water and some can move between them. All right, well, let's see if we can check in with my friend Sharky. He's been moving around the aquarium trying to find us. So let's see if we can check in with Sharky and see what's going on. Hi, everyone. Hey, Sharky. My name is Sharky. I work here at the aquarium. Today, I was going to go on an adventure to see if I can learn more about sharks. Hey, would you like to join me on my adventure? Yeah, let's help Sharky out. All right, well, great. Sharks okay. have been around for over 400 million years. That is way back, even before dinosaurs were around. Over time, sharks have become one of the most popular hunters in the ocean. Sharks come in all different kinds of shapes and sizes. Some are shaped like footballs, while others are as flat as a pancake. Some sharks are as small as your hand, and others are as big as a bus. Dr. Ramora, do you have anything in your classroom to show the students just how large and small these sharks can actually be? I do. Great! While you teach the kids about sizes, I'm going to swim off to Shark Lagoon. Meet me there later. All right. So while Sharky's heading out to Shark Lagoon, I have a special way that we can learn about shark size, but I'm going to need your help at home. I don't have a big enough space here to really do all of the sizes, so we're going to use our friends at home. Anybody around you can help you out with this too. So let's learn about some different shark sizes. One of our most numerous sharks at the aquarium are called the bamboo sharks. So we might have a picture we can show you. These are the bamboo sharks. They are a special shark. We can touch them here at the aquarium in our shark lagoon touch pools. They're safe to touch and interact with. And one, they're very friendly, but two, they're not as big as we might think sharks can get. So everybody at home, I want you to try something for me. You're gonna hold your arms out like this. Kind of like your cheerleaders at home. Give me a V. All right, so that, that space right there, that is as big as a bamboo shark. And that's their adult size. When they're born, they're very tiny. They're almost maybe three inches, but they only get up to about three feet. That is almost half of all shark types, the size of them. Only 50% get this big. We think of sharks as all being these monstrous, huge animals. But so many of them are small, and that just seems a little different from what we expect to happen. Now, here's what the sharks look like at Shark Lagoon. The bamboo sharks, the brown bended and white spotted, are all moving around, hanging out, swimming inside the water. And when they come near to the guests, the guests can touch them. 
But this is as big as they get. See the reason there's that nice little yellow fish that likes to hang out and eat the algae off the rocks and surfaces in the shark lagoon. So bamboo sharks don't get very big. Now the next shark size we'll talk about, we already saw this one. I think it's the black tip reef shark. Now we talked about the counter shading, the dark back and light belly, but how big is a black tip reef shark? All right, so we did the big V for a bamboo shark. Now get your friend next to you. Both of you stand next to each other and doing that. You ready? Okay, that much is about a black tip reef shark. Now next to me, it's like this much. They're about my size, five to six feet long. That is the length of a black tip reef shark. Now we name them off of their characteristics. The ends of their fins have black points. There's other types of reef sharks that you might find in the ocean, and they have a little bit different coloring on their fins and their scales. So if you look at them, we can tell exactly what kind of reef shark we're looking at. All right, so that's shark size number two. This is about 60%, almost two thirds of shark sizes are maybe six feet. Let's get to the big sharks. The next biggest shark we can show you is one of my favorite sharks here at the aquarium. This is our big sand tiger shark. He looks a little scary, but he's a big softy. He's very friendly. The divers that get in the water to scrub the exhibit, they don't mind him and he doesn't mind them at all. Now our sand tiger reef shark is even bigger. So if you have a third person in the room to do the shark cheerleader size, we need three of you. So each of you stand right next to each other, or maybe like two of me doing that. I don't have a second one of me. I only got the one. So imagine two of me, that is the sand tiger reef shark. They have very special teeth that they eat their food with. We'll take a look at how sharks eat a little bit later. And their fins are very big compared to other fish. Those fins tell you a lot about how they swim. And we'll take a look at swimming in a little bit too. So now we've hit about 10 feet for shark size. That's a pretty good sized shark. But what's bigger than a sand tiger shark, Emily? Let's see what's left. The great white. Now, I just got a question in about why don't aquariums have great white sharks? It's someone's favorite shark, Becca. Becca, it's a great shark to have. The great white shark, you want to know how big they are? You might think it's as big as the room you're in, but that could be even bigger. They get about 22 feet long on the largest size that we've ever recorded. That's a big shark, many thousands of pounds at that point too. And I think in Australia, they were able to film during a dive, the largest great white shark that was also potentially pregnant or holding babies ever recorded. And if you watch the video, it's a big animal, but that's still not even the biggest shark. But let's answer Becca's question, why we don't have one. What's well, 22 feet long? Remember we said the Mako shark needs a lot of space to move. The great white shark, needs even more. There have been records of great white sharks moving between the tip of South America to Australia. That's like 4,000 miles. And it did that in two months. That's one way. So if they need that much space to potentially go find a mate or to go find food, we just don't have the space to house an animal that's quite that big. The biggest animals that we have, one of which is in Shark Lagoon, it's our reticulated whiptail ray. Her body is pretty big, bigger than we ever thought possible. She's about 10 feet long, six feet wide, and 400 pounds. This huge stingray is about as big as we can hold in a space like that. Parker, our male sea lion, he's about the next biggest thing we have right now. He can get up to 800 pounds in the summer. So we just don't have this facility space to house something this large. Great question, Becca. But remember, there's something bigger than a great white shark. What could possibly be bigger than the great white shark? The whale shark. I'm sure you were thinking that. And if you were thinking of other huge sharks, there's three sharks that are very large about this animal size, but the longest that we've ever found for great or for the uh, whale shark is about 60 feet. Whale sharks, basking sharks, and the mega mouth shark are huge animals but they eat something very different. They eat plankton. So mega mouths and basking sharks, they get pretty big, 30, 40 feet. This plankton, 
is what they're eating. Now, this is a huge picture of the plankton. They're actually about this big. They're very, very tiny. And they just swim through filtering some of this food out of the water. If you notice, there's not any big teeth hanging out of this animal's mouth. They're just filtering the plankton. So whale sharks are huge animals, and they get as big as a bus or a couple of large SUVs. You can imagine that in front of you. That's how long these animals can get. All right. Now, we had a couple other questions. Before I find Sharky at Shark Lagoon, Juliana wanted to know, why aren't the sharks eating the other fish in Shark Lagoon? That is a really good question, too. They do like to eat fish, and there's fish that they live next to, so why don't they interact with those fish? We here, as our, here we go, here's Shark Lagoon. Our staff here offer the animals in this exhibit food every day. And even if they don't want to eat it every day, they're still offered the food in case they're hungry. And because they're so well fed, they're not really trying to eat anything else. Oh, wow. Look at that. So they're so well fed, they don't want to eat anything else that they live near. And that's how we try to have everybody work together. We pick species or types of animals that can live together very safely, but also we feed them often enough they're not looking for food in any other area. Another really good question was how deep do sharks swim? Well, they can get pretty far down there. They don't need air like mammals do. So they can be very deep in the ocean. The great white shark can be hundreds, if not a thousand feet down or more, especially during their breeding season. Scientists have found out that the females will hang out at one depth and the males will hang out at another depth. So if you're looking for a shark and you know how deep it is, you could almost tell if it was a male or female shark based off of this one area they like to be in called the White Shark Cafe. Now there's a lot more research scientists have to do to figure out how deep can they be found, what all habitats are they in, and one of the other amazing sharks that lives in a very deep habitat is called the Goblin Shark. If you haven't seen one of these before, I recommend you have an adult help you Google it because they're very cool. Their face will come out of their, well, their mouth comes out of their face to grab their food. They don't have hands like us. They can't just grab something they want. So their mouth will kind of stretch out a little bit to grab their food and pull it back in. That's a really amazing adaptation for a deep water animal to have too. Well, let's see if Sharky made it out to Shark Lagoon. It is a little windy today. So let's see if he found his way out to Shark Lagoon. Hello everyone. Look who I ran into. This here is Steve Blair. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm an aquarist at the aquarium. In Aqua Delaware, how did it who? An aquarist. That means I take care of the animals. I'm in charge of feeding them, treating them for diseases, and watching the exhibits. Today I'm feeding Shark Lagoon. Wow, what a great job. It looks like there are a lot of mouths to feed here, Steve. Just how many sharks are there? There's about 150 bamboo sharks in the large touch pool to Shark Lagoon. 150? What do That's all the sharks lot. like to eat? Well, sharks are hunters. Today I'm feeding them squid. Squid? Ew, gross. Do all sharks eat the same kind of food? No, you should know that, Sharky. Sharks have different kinds of teeth to eat different kinds of food. Wow, that sure is a lot of different teeth, Steve. Hey, do the divers get in the water and they like being with the sharks? That is a great question, Dr. Ramora. I will go ask them. Meet me up in the dive locker. Bye, Steve. All right, so we're going to let them go up to the dive locker. But let's look at some shark teeth. Now, remember, I said we have a special camera. We can look at some teeth over here. So I'm going to hang out off the screen for a minute. And let's take a look at an animal that lives in Shark Lagoon, what their teeth would look like. So here's my camera. Here's my hands. This is the jaw of a zebra shark. Let's see if the camera will help focus on it for us. That doesn't help. There we go. All right. Now, all of these tiny little teeth, that's my finger next to these tiny little teeth. Zebra sharks have big bodies. They get about the same size or bigger as our sand tiger, but they don't have huge mouths full of really big teeth. They have all these little tiny teeth, very many rows of tiny teeth. And the great thing about their teeth is they grow in this direction, towards the inside. So if you were an animal and you got caught, those teeth help grab onto them, and it can crush certain kinds of prey that have shells. What kind of animal has a shell you think something would eat? Maybe a clam 
or a snail or something else crawling on the ground. Zebra sharks can crawl around or sit on the ground and even hunt out of the sand. And these special teeth help them eat the smaller prey that would live in that space. All right, I'm going to zoom back out real quick. Whoop. See, there's that jaw next to my hand. Well, let's take a look at a shark with some very different teeth. This is the jaw from a bull shark. Very different shape and style of tooth. Now we're going to go way back into these teeth. And we can even see that there is a different texture to these teeth. Do you notice these little ridges on the sides of these teeth? Well, great. Those parts of their teeth help them so they can cut through large prey. So the bigger your teeth, the bigger the food is that you can eat. Now, just like we use a knife to help cut through our food, a shark has special teeth to help cut through their food. So you either need crushing teeth or you need cutting teeth. So that is what a bull shark's teeth look like. Well, what about their cousins, the stingrays? We mentioned stingrays earlier. Let's get back to talking about them a little bit. What about the teeth of a stingray? We don't need to zoom too far into them because their jaws aren't very small. Now these teeth right here, yeah, these are teeth. That I know they look, it looks like uh, snake skin or some other shape of stuff going on, but these are the teeth. Their teeth aren't along the edges like ours to take bites out of stuff. Their teeth are in the middle to crunch their prey. When they grab an animal with a shell out of the sand, they have to crunch the prey, the shell, so that they can get to the food inside. So that's why their teeth are shaped like that. Okay, let's see if we can guess what kind of food this next animal will eat. Now, we just have part of the plastic model of this jaw. Now that we know that long teeth are for big food, tiny teeth are for small food, and flat teeth are for crunching your food, what do you think this shark would want to eat? Remember, you can text in questions or comments to our friends here in the office. You can text in your guesses too. 562-286-1838. So what was this going to eat? The long teeth tell you it wants to eat big food. Probably fish or squid. Something that's a little slippery. These long skinny teeth do help with that. Great job, everybody. Now, Sharky did tell me that he got up to the dive locker. He must have been running his way up the stairs because it was not very close. The dive locker said, oh, okay, so it, they said the divers do get in the water and it's safe for them to do so. He wouldn't let the divers go somewhere that's unsafe. They even get to feed a very special kind of shark that lives here in our blue cavern exhibit. It's not always visible on the camera because they like to be wherever they want to be in that exhibit and it's 27 feet tall. So that's a lot of space for our camera to try and watch. But the leopard sharks that live here in California, just like this one, that is the shark that the divers can feed by hand. And they're very gentle. All sharks really don't mind people. Then you give them their space, they give you your space, and they don't mind. But the leopard sharks, we can feed by hand. And the other sharks here, we use either like salatongs or these grippers that we can reach really far over into the exhibit to try and get to the animals. So we can make sure we feed only the shark that we want to feed. Now, we had a couple questions that our guests were bringing in here, so we should probably get to them, too. David wants to know, where do nurse sharks live? That's a good question. Now, we used to have a nurse shark here a long time ago in our Shark Lagoon habitat. Do you remember what the temperature of Shark Lagoon was? It was kind of warm. So nurse sharks are going to be either in a tropical or what we call temperate. It's kind of a medium temperature water. So they can live in warmer waters, but not really cold waters. Good question. Xavier had a question about, can a great white shark eat a whale shark? Well, let's think. How would that work? They're either the same size or the whale shark is bigger. Well, great white sharks do eat big things, but also sharks will scavenge on animals that have passed away. That's part of the natural cycle. Animals that have died are still potentially food for something else. 
So it may hunt a smaller shark, but if it's a lot bigger than it, the great white has to use a lot of energy to get its food. And now it doesn't want to waste any energy because that's really important. Sharks don't eat all the time in the ocean, so they have to conserve or save that energy. So they might eat a whale shark, but I don't know how many times a whale shark has been hunted by a great white. Now another good question I often get from my young learners here at the aquarium is, why did megalodons go extinct? Well, they were huge animals, so their food had to be very big too. Well, what happens if you run out of food? Hmm, probably not gonna survive too long because you need a lot of animals that are small to sustain you. So if you're a 60 foot shark and you need to eat big animals like large marine mammals like whales or seals and sea lions, and there's not enough of them around, that potentially could lead to their extinction. In other terms or in other animals, Sometimes the conditions of the environment change so much, you don't have any good abilities to survive. So in some cases, animals have gone extinct in the past because the world has changed and they weren't able to change enough with it so that they could survive. Good question. How do sharks hide from other predators? Oh, let's go back to Shark Lagoon and take a quick look. And we'll see if we can observe that really special color feature on any of our sharks. Do you remember what it was called? It had a really big name. It's called counter shading. No, come back. Okay, maybe another shark. Oh, hey, sea turtle's out. And there's a shark. So sea turtle's hanging out with our sharks. Look for the color pattern on a shark or a stingray that shows you that their belly is light colored and their back is dark. Here's our gray reef shark. Perfect timing sharks. That color shading helps them when they're swimming around. But what if you're like the zebra shark and you can sit on the floor? Some sharks can hide in the nooks and crannies of spaces because remember, not all sharks are big animals. A lot of them are very small. So sometimes they huddle together and hide to confuse a predator, look like one big thing. Sometimes they're just able to hide in the sand and the reef or in the kelp and avoid a predator altogether. So they know how to hide and they have color patterns that help them camouflage. Good question. Do our sharks have live babies or do they lay eggs? Well, guess what? They can do both. Fern that just swam by us, Fern lays eggs. Now, actually, there's an egg. Now, once Emily goes back to our shark, we're going to show you a real egg. It's okay. It was, you know, just a happy accident that was in the same spot where I was pointing. So you see that fuzzy patch right there? That's an egg. And that's a turtle. You turtle, you're getting my egg. Okay. The egg is right there. So, hello, sea turtle. Sharks that lay eggs, they have this stringy material on it called filaments, and they want to stick it to something and tie it down so that it doesn't float away. Here's those filaments on our picture. Those are, they are really, really sticky, kind of like gluing something somewhere. And then the baby will grow in the egg, depending on the temperature of the water or the species, three to six months or maybe even more than six months. And this skinny patch right here, that's the back of the egg. And then this spot right here at the top, that's where the shark will push out when it wants to hatch. So that's the egg laying shark. The bamboo sharks we talked about earlier that we can touch here at the aquarium, they also lay eggs. This is a bamboo shark egg, I believe. And they do lay eggs pretty often. Now, if they're eating a lot like ours do, because remember, we offer them food every day, they're gonna lay eggs a lot. But the sharks that have live babies, like the black tip reef sharks, that doesn't happen very often because well, we need to have a male and a female together in the same space so they could potentially have babies. Now, one of the cool things that we've had here is our vet office with Dr. Adams has done research to figure out what's the best way to have sharks have babies while under human care. So we know so much more now than we did even three years ago about how they have babies and how we can help them have more babies so that sharks in the ocean can repopulate or keep their population numbers increasing. Those are really good questions. How many babies can a shark give birth to? <clears throat> that depends on the shark. Sometimes one, sometimes a few. I believe our black tip reef shark, I think, had three or four pups at once. But a great white shark will usually only birth one pup. So it's a little different depending on the type of animal. When they lay eggs, they lay one at a time. But they might lay a few a week. So it just depends on the type of shark. Great question about egg laying. Okay, we have a couple other really good questions. Robert, Robert's watching all the way from Washington. 
Well, thanks for hanging out and watching with us, Robert. Robert wants to know what does a goblin shark eat? Hmm. It lives deep in the ocean where it's dark. It has a special mouth that reaches out and grabs food. I'll tell you a secret. It has long teeth. So what do you think something with long teeth wants to eat? Fish, squid, other squishy animals that don't have a shell. So even though it lives in the deep ocean, it still has the ability to find its prey. The sharks have these special abilities, just like we have our special senses, you know, sight, taste, touch, smell, hearing. But they have another really good one. It's about how they sense electricity. Everything that moves around that has muscles in a body makes electricity. That tiny little electric signal is making my brain do all these things. Well, the sharks can sense that. And a goblin shark has a very elongated or straight long face that allows them to sense more electricity. Hammerheads have a very wide face that allow them to do this too. So that's just one of the adaptations about how they can find their food. Now, Kara wants to know about how many types of sharks are there? I last heard there's about 470-ish species of sharks. That's a lot of sharks. There's over 600 types of rays. So sharks and rays are a big group of animals. Why do sharks eat different foods? Well, Matthew, that's a really good question. I hope we were helping answer that. Remember, teeth shape or tooth shape helps figure all that out. It tells you what they're going to eat. If you have the wrong kind of tooth for the wrong kind of food, it just doesn't help you eat that animal. Now, Athena wants to know, why do sharks attack other sharks? The ocean is a big place, and sometimes food is not easy to come by. A lot of animals in the ocean will eat whatever they can sink their teeth into, because food is not always plentiful for some animals. So they'll often eat whatever they can find. So that's one reason why animals might attack or eat or hunt very similar animals to them. Okay. I think I have one last question. Oh, two questions. So Faith asks, do sharks have bones? That's a great question, Faith. I didn't even talk about that yet. Okay. I have here an actual shark jaw. Don't worry, I'm safe with it. I'm not poking myself with the teeth. Now their jaws and the rest of their body are very different from our skeleton. So we both have a skeleton, but a shark skeleton is made out of something special. Take your finger and wiggle your nose. This part's really squishy, right? Same with our ears. This part's really squishy. This is called cartilage. So sharks have a skeleton made of cartilage, but no bones. We have a skeleton made of cartilage and bones. So our bodies are a little bit different. So sharks don't have true bones, but they do have a skeleton to give them shape and form when they're in the ocean. And the last question, how do sharks grow big? Well, how do you grow big and strong? You eat all the right food you're supposed to. You rest when you need to. Probably have to listen to your parents. I don't know if sharks do that. But they eat and they can survive in their habitat. In, in certain cases, certain kinds of sharks can get really big, but other sharks can't get quite as big. So just like there's a range of human height, there's a range of some sizes for the same type of shark, but other sharks are just so much bigger. All right. Well, we're about out of time. I want to thank you all for hanging out with us today, learning about sharks, playing with Sharky a little bit as he wanders around the aquarium, helping us learn about shark abilities. And also remember, if you've been watching this online and on the pre-recorded version, you can email questions into us at live, L-I-V-E, at L-B-A-O-P, for Long Beach Aquarium of Pacific dot org. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out and learning a little bit more about sharks today on our Aquarium Online Academy.